Good afternoon, everybody. I am excited that I'm getting ready to go into a chapter, and it is day 37, and we are getting ready to read Job chapter 37. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you that you have allowed us to see. You brought us to this place. We have sat, we have read, we have done everything that a human being can do in order to understand Job chapter 37. I ask that not only do you, you promised me, this is what you said, you said that if I need to anything according to your word, that the Holy Ghost will bring things back to my remembrance because I've already did everything that I know to look at chapter 37 to make sure that I studied it with all of my might. I ask that you come in and make this lesson so simple that we will walk away knowing that again, you have done what you've always done. You have been the great teacher and you are. You are the teacher of teachers. You are, when Jesus spoke, there was nobody lacking understanding. And if they did, they pulled him to the side and said, Master, teach us. What were you talking about when you were talking about in there? So we've gone where we heard you talk. And now I want the words to come out of my mouth that they will fit exactly what Jesus would say had I pulled him to the side and said, talk to me. Because this chapter right here is you being God. <laughs> and I thank you for allowing me to see what I will see and what I will share. Thank you for all the listeners. Thank you for an understanding. We come so that even a child can pick up this book in chapter 37 and say, I see God again. Woo! Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. And thank you for helping us to forgive those that have sinned against us. You are the power, the glory, both now, always been, and forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so I'm going into uh, uh, Job chapter 37. All right. What I want to say is, let me tell you the truth about chapter 37. Chapter 37 was one of the most challenging books that I've read since I read and been reading it for the last, at least the last year. You know how you walk with God and then you know how the story ends. Every once in a while, you'll get a scripture like my sister called me last night and she said, what does it mean when God said that um, he gave an evil spirit or he allowed or he gave and he, uh, he permitted an evil spirit to come up on Saul? And you see scriptures like that, that you had to pause and you jump. But what if God gives you um, a whole chapter that had that kind of take your mind to a point? And you say, Lord, what are you saying right here? And this, was, this is what chapter 37 does. It's like you walk with God. This is how it did for me. You walk to God and you say, one, two, three, four, five. Got it. One, two, three, four, five. Got it. One, two, three, four, five. I got it. This is like going to the movie saying, you know, the guy got caught. And you know the movie, the guy got caught. But you get to Job 37 and you say, what just happened? It's like he left you on a cliffhanger. But well, let's walk with God so we can see that when God says what he says, he knows what he's doing. And just like my sister wanted to know, why did God give Saul an evil spirit and the evil spirit and God took ownership of it and said, I gave it to him. Can you still trust me after you know I said I gave somebody something evil? So when I did teach that back then, I was letting her know what, we get, what we're going to get to know about God is God is in control of everything. Nothing that happens in this earth happened because God was not looking. God is looking at everything. So when we see a scripture like that, are you able to trust God knowing that he said that evil, both good and evil are in my hand? I got the negative numbers and I got the positive numbers. I own them all. It wouldn't be a number line in its completeness. I got two mountains. And I told you when you came into the out of Egypt that you're going to get over here. You're going to be on one mountain. 
And it's going to be the blessed mountain. And you get on the other mountain. He said, I ain't moving that mountain. And it's going to be the cursed mountain. I just want you to know that you are able to make decisions about how you're going to choose. So what we have to do when we see Job 37 is we got to grow up. This is not, this is not for babies or somebody who just want God to end the movie like, you know, he going he gonna to get it. He going to get it. He going to get it. That, he, he got him again. But what can you trust him if the movie don't end like you predicted? Because this one of those books, after reading and looking at everybody that, that I saw, and I didn't see, quote, everybody, but I saw enough people to agree with me saying Job chapter 37. In fact, the book of Job is an eye-opener. And if you are really serious, you're going to come out of this book and you're going to you're gonna know more then how do what, what most people say? My righteousness, I hold fast and I ain't going to let it go. Now, I know most of that because I grew up around it. But when you study this book and you study the life of this man called Job, you are growing up in the word of God and you are becoming more mature when you read. And I'm just getting ready to eat out of chapter 37. So I'm getting ready to take you to we're going to go back and let's give you a little bit more information on this guy named Elahu. This is the last, this is the last time, the last chapter that Elahu is going to have a monologue. Well, he's not having a dialogue because nobody else is talking. So he's really just kind of speaking his mind. Where Elahu is in chapter 37 made me go back and wonder where was he in chapter 36, 35, 34, 33, and 32. I think he's starting chapter 32. Elihu is a young man. Let me tell you who he is. He's a young man. He had listened to the older guys. When he heard the older guys talk, he came straight up and he was very clear. I am not listening to you based on, he said, well, I came here listening to you because I thought you knew what you were talking about because you were an old guy. So check, Elihu had a personality. He said, but when I heard you speak and talk about Job, you talked about him in a way that I'm not going to even use your words and neither am I going to give you flattering titles because you esteem yourself to be somebody that ought to be heard because of your age and uh, your gray beard and your perhaps gray hair. He said, but I'm not coming. I'm really going to separate myself from what you said. And I'm going to, I'm going to come from this. I'm coming from the straight. And then he told Job, he said, Job, I ain't going to be, he said, don't let my terror scare you. now. And I ain't trying to scare you. In other words, I have not condemned you, but I am going to take all the facts of what I heard said to you and I listened to how you responded and then I'm going to make my assessment and then I'm going to give you the knowledge that I have from a far place. In other words, I'm going to let you know that I'm just, I'm just not getting ready to waste time. I'm really, in fact, Job, I, I've really thought about what I'm saying. Being that Job did not respond or say a word or change Elihu kept talking then Elihu's pretty much like people do you ain't you ain't ready to come to the altar yet then he get kind of arrogant a little bit being young not set in his ways but young enough to say I'm slipping and he starts saying to Job well if you did fall in the hole and you didn't Repent after what I just got through telling you. I hope that the hole is deeper. That's kind of where Elihu is like this. He's, he's, he's flowing. But I guess I can also say today he's going to see not only is he flowing. And let's see, can we see him? Is he growing out of his own mouth? Because something got Elihu's attention. And I... All I can do is tell you that when I get through reading this, I'm going to give you the heart, the heart of what I got. And this is one of those books that we may have to walk away. And you may see it with all of your heart that you maybe can add to what I think. And I'm open to hear it, but I'm giving you 37. The first thing that I thought about 37 is I thought I was going to the movie and it was going to close like it normally closes. And let's see. And this is one of those movies that said, what? So let's see. At this, 
uh, this is Ella who talking to young guy. Last time I'm going to ever hear anybody talk because the next chapter I already heard about it and I haven't read it is God is going to speak. And I wonder, did Elihu set the stage where God got everything out of Bildad? He got everything out of um, Zophar. He got everything out of um, El El Eliphaz. And he said, okay, y'all be quiet. Now I want to hear everything out of Elihu. And once I let y'all talk, there will never be a never, another word spoken by anybody concerning me that's not going to sound like these four guys. So I want to, because Job is the only guy on earth that has ever demonstrated that he is perfect. He is upright. He does not, uh, uh, he hates evil and he fears, he reverence me. So if I got one guy that is everything that I want in all people. Then I got four guys who are going to oppose this one guy. And those four are going to be representation of all opposers. So out of their mouths is going to come words 6,000 years later. And you can say that either was Job. He either sounded like Elihu. He either sounded like Eliphaz. He either sounded like Bildad or he sounded like Zophar. So we got, what, five characters that we're going to be able to say you either sound in faith like Job or some kind of way you're going to demonstrate your level of maturity by these four guys. And the guy that talked the most is Elihu. And let's see whether or not God is saying that's why I let him talk. Because when he saw himself tripping, perhaps, let's see. We'll, I don't want to tell you the show. Let's just go look at it. Elihu, last words to Job. Let me go back to the last words that he said because I don't want to start 37 without looking at 36. The last thing that Job, that he said, he said, uh, his, well, I can't say the last thing because he was getting, he was starting to get to on the right foot in chapter 36. Because he started talking about what he knew more about. He started talking about the elements of the earth or the, the clouds and the, and, and, and the vapor. It seemed like this guy had some understanding of God when he saw God in his nature as in um, his creation of the skies. It seemed like he was right where he could talk instead of talking about, instead of talking about Job and, and condemning him, he, he flipped, he tripped up and started talking about something he knew something about, which was the, um, the changing of, he, I, I don't know that. I don't. The, the, the elements and how the, the how clouds work and how the sun works and how the rain works and that I, I I can't give you the global word for that. But that's what he started talking about. So he, in other words, if I start talking to you about teaching, then I can pretty much take teaching and tell you something good about God. Like Randy is a person that talks about nursing. When you are good at being a nurse, that means talk what you know. And from what you know, then you can bring God in it. And then you can parallel the two. But as long as I'm talking about you and thinking I know you, I'm going to be up and down. And I'm not going to be sure of where I'm going with it because I'm going to get out. I'm going to say some things that are not going to be true. Just like when Jesus said to Peter, he said, I want to make you a fisherman of men. You're good at fishing, but come here, let me show you how. How about my computer is not acting right? I want to show you how to be fishers of men. I got to put this back in there. Sorry, y'all. I got to put my laws, my, my, because I want to go back and look at 36, but um, I think I got enough to see where God is, I believe he's saying, according to, come on, computer. 
How about he didn't even want to act right? Okay, here we go. So being that Elihu is onto something, let's just say for the sake of understanding, right now there's a storm outside. Not only is Elihu talking, but he's hearing what he's trying to describe to Job as in, did you hear that? So we, let's say it's raining and storming outside because that's what he's talking about. He's talking about God glory and understanding of what's going on. Not only is he talking about it, but God is illustrating his words, but as they can hear it, uh, the sound of it, he also I'm a parallel with God's word and it's truly raining. At this also, my heart trembled. In other words, I just got through talking about telling you about the clouds and what they do and look at it. It's, 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 it's outside. It's doing it. At this also, my heart trembles and it's moved out of his place. Now, when I said, and it's moved out of his place, whatever I'm hearing is the heart is, is doing this thing. But not only that, my heart is not positioned. Could it be that my heart is not set in the, in the cavity where the heart is? I know something different is happening on the inside of me. Or it, and it possibly can mean that I know something has shifted. Wherever I was going, the first verse said there's a shifting going on. And it's got my attention. He said, hear attentively. Listen. The noise of his voice. Listen, 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 listen to the clouds. Listen to the thunder. Listen, listen to the lightning. Hear Pay attention to the noise of his voice and the sound that goes out of his mouth. This is the same Elihu who was at first attacking Job, but this time he's saying, there's a shift going on. Pay attention to what's happening. He directs it under the whole heaven. So this guy is in tune with, pay attention to what's going on. I ain't looking at you right now, Job. I, I'm gonna, if I got to say something to you, I'm going to say it, but right now, Something happened. Something is shaking in the atmosphere. He directs it under the whole heaven and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. Let's say that God is sitting on his throne and here are the clouds. All right, cloud, I need you to move there. Lightning, I need you to go there. He just, he said he's just directing things. And this is God we're talking about. And he has everything under his control. And that's the kind of stuff that scales. That's the kind of stuff that moves my heart out of place. That's the kind of thing that we got to make sure that is God speaking other than what we are normally hearing. It sounds like it sounds like noise, but it's something behind the noise that I'm hearing that I, I it ain't just the regular sound of a, 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 a pay attention to what he's saying, because I believe that what he's saying, there is a voice in the midst of what's going on outside of my hearing. See God as he's directing the, the heaven. He's in order. He's showing us that I control the clouds. I control the rain. I tell how much rain to fall. After a voice roars, he thunders. With the voice of, of his excellency. In other words, I got this in my hand. And he will not stay them when his voice is heard. In other words, I ain't getting ready to tell the lightning not to do what it's doing. I'm not getting ready to tell the whatever I sent out to do, I want to go accomplish it. I'm not, once I speak, once I get it out of my mouth, I wanted to go do what I said do. And I ain't going to say, uh-oh, I better not say that because they might, they may not like that. Nope, I wanted to go. I'm not going to tell it to be still. Once I speak, the words that I speak, just like the thunder that comes out of my mouth, is going to accomplish. I'm not going to send it without making sure that I thought about what I was saying before I sent the word out of me. Just as... The, when I tell the thunder to do what it does, I'm going to tell the lightning to move when it does. I'm going to tell the rain to come down. I'm going to be talking to all of them and I need them to get to moving and, 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 and only come back with what I said do after you accomplish what I sent you out to do. God thunders marvelously with his voice. Great thing does he, which we cannot comprehend. So this same guy that was telling, talking more about Job, he's getting his understanding. I'm going to talk more about God. Because if I'm going to move Job in any direction, I ain't going to get Job to move. I'm not going to get Job understanding to, of changing, talking about Job. I'm going to get 
I believe God is this guy saying, I'm going to get God. I'm going to get you to change when I start talking about God. Because if I talk more about your problems, I'm limited anyway. I'm subject to say something that may not be right. But if I start talking about him and I talk about how marvelous he is, if I be lifted up, if you talk about what I said, not by, because when you start talking about people, you got to put some of your thoughts in there. And God said, people are not going to change based on what you think about them because you're too limited. But if you talk about the greatness of who I am, if you just got to talk about how great I am because you're looking at the sky and say, yep, that's something that I can talk about because I know he did that and can't nobody do that but him. So I'm thinking that Elihu is saying, we have been spending too much time talking about why Job is laying down here with all these issues. And perhaps I do think he did something, but that ain't going to get Job to change. So, Job, let me talk about something that we both can agree. Let's talk about something that's going to get us to a point that we can, we can still be friends. And at the same time, we, we can talk, we talk about somebody we know both. We both know God is good. God thunders marvelously with his voice. Great things does he. He's talking about how good God is, which we cannot comprehend. When we start talking like that, and we got some evidence because the world can understand. They understand when Jesus said, a tree, a farmer. He said, when you start talking about things that people can relate to, they don't feel intimidated because they said, oh, I, I, I understand that. Job was a man that was wise. Job was a man that talked about a lot of things. Now it seems like young man Elihu is saying, I'm going I'm to I'm get you, Job, but I gotta, I, I'm got i not trying to get you now because my heart on the inside just shifted out of his place. So I got some sh shifting going on the inside of me. Then Elihu said, for he said to the snow, he said, go to the earth, be thou on the earth. Likewise, he said to the small rain. He taught, God is saying, he told the snow, go get on the earth. Then he said to the rain that we don't pay attention to, go to the, look how God is just orchestrating this, paying attention to stuff that we just, we just think that it's a part of the elements and it ought to do what he does at a certain time. We got certain months that we know it's going to rain. And then God said, go small rain, go there and rain over there in Dakota. And to the great rain and to the great rain, he speaks of his strength. He said, for, he's, for he said to the snow, God talking to the snow, snow's okay, I'll go down. Be thou on the earth, he does that. Likewise to the small rain, and the small rain came. And then to the big, great, great rain, he said, show your strength. And then he seals up the hand of every man. I, every, all the elements doing their thing. And then he said, I got a way. Y'all ain't talked to me in so long. This is, this is Ella who talking. And he seals up the hand of every man. That means that I can send someone to earth and make you, make you talk to me. You ain't talked to me in so long until I'm going to have to use the weather to go down there and do what you do so I can get these people to holler at me. Because as long as they look like the weather not doing what it does, let's just say the farmer hadn't talked to God since the last time um, he went out there to get his quota of vegetables or his crop of vegetable vegetables and god said rain be still i need that farmers to talk to me today and my question when i read that is why is it that god got to stop something to get us to say something to him why is it that he got to remove something and then we start thinking oh there he is god he said i do that on occasions. And let's see what the word says. He said, he seals up the hand of every man. In other words, I stop you from working. I can put so much snow down there until none of y'all will go to work. I can send a, I can send, I can, I can do, I can make the earth. He said, I'm just going to be honest with you now. But we're going to find out because somebody asked a question last night. If God gave the permission to Satan to send a tornado is it the enemy that sends that or is God orchestrating that and it's coming without the enemy? Let's see what the word says. 
He seals up the hand of every man. In other words, ain't nobody going to work. That all men may know I'm God. I'm in control. So don't ever walk a day because it's hard to get to, it's hard to get people to see God when everything going in your favor. It's hard to talk to them. You don't need them. That's what happened to the children. Of, that's what happened before the children of Israel under the before Noah. The Bible said they were all um renowned. They had it going on, they had it figured out. They were uh, attractive people. They were smart people because anybody just walking straight out of God's class, having sat under him for 900 years and you heard nothing but God talk and watch his door, you, you can get beside yourself. I'm, I'm not saying that's where it ought to be. But imagine being connected to the very best, no deluded God himself speaking and you get all his wisdom and then you start living and you living that long and then you get beside yourself. God, I had a whole earth full of folk like that. He said, but you don't see me. You won't talk to me. You get back like them folks that I had to wash up on that flood. Because it seemed like you don't understand. I want to bless you. It, it, it seems like when you, when you don't need me, you don't talk to me. But every once in a while, I miss you so much until I tell everybody, rain, storm, ice, shut the cars down. Now, what if God said, I'm going to shut the internet down? He ain't did that yet. Look at the mercy of God. Out of all the things that we never had a problem with, we, God has given us access to talk online. But what if he just decide, flip, flip, flip the script. He can go to the same elements and say, I want you to freeze the, uh, uh, the waves in the air where they can't communicate. Because they, they think I'm playing. Now, is that the love of God saying, I'm trying to tell you I'm God because I want you to see that I'm Tarzan and, and you... No, he said, no, I ain't doing that. He said, I know that if you don't get in me, you're going... He said, you got to be somewhere. You got to be in me or you can't be without me. And without me, you can't do nothing. And I want you to be able to do something. So if I ever had to pull you in and have a conference or even beat you, it ain't because I'm doing it out of anger. I'm doing it because I got to get you to turn around and see yourself so you can come back and see. You looking for me, but you keep finding stuff and you, 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 you take stuff and then you start creating gods out of stuff. And I just want to get you back on track. In other words, he said, I will let you know that I'm God and I ain't doing it because I ain't got nothing else to do. You need me and I know you want me because when you see me, you're going to like me. Well, you're going to see that I am what I say I am. But he said to the snow, I, he seals up the hands of every man that all men may know his work. Then when I do that, the beasts go into the den. The den, the beasts, I can't, I can't graze today. And remain in their places because it's too cold out there. He said, I know how to send you home. I know how to make it snow. And so you, I, can, I can cut the electricity out with just snow. Y'all be all them electrical wires going across. Not till snow go land on it. They won't glorify me. I'm trying to get them to turn to me. All I want them to do is talk to me. He said, out of the south. He said, now you got the, the, he said, I'm just telling you what I can do to you. This is what Elihu is talking about, God. He's no longer trying to point out the sins of Job. Because if you want me to change my ways, does he even talk about God? Talk about how great he is. Talk about the beauty of the word of God. Talk about something about him that relates to what I'm going to until I can put myself and see, I want to be close to that. Some kind of way there was a shift in, in Elihu. Out of the south comes the whirlwind and cold out of the north. In other words, we talked about this last night. The south wind is, is where that stabilizes where you want to go to Hawaii, where you want to go to the different islands where the sun just kind of, you it ain't cold. like Because if that north wind starts blowing, we're going to start freezing. And God said, I'm in control. Uh, it, uh, Elihu is saying, God is in control of all of this, Job. 
When you get people to see the beauty of God, you get people to come to themselves. Because when I see all of who he is, and you talk to somebody that can, can talk about uh, uh, the things about the body, or you can get somebody that talks about how, make it so simple that you understand uh, math in a way where it's broken down. And then when I can get you to see that, I can easily get you to get you back on track with who God is in you. And that's what we're doing here where Elihu is wasn't not was not talking like that all the time, but some kind of way he done got kicked in, kicked into the right path. He's talking about the north wind and how it bring in cold and the south wind bringing a little warm air, better air, the air that we like. He said, by the breath of God, frost is given. He said, God said, frost. <laughs> Go frosty things. <laughs> he said, by the breath of God, if God just said, and frost said, land, just what, he's talking about the amazing God. It, this is Elihu, the same guy that was imperfected, the same guy who was saying things that, but some kind of way, this boy, because I believe that Elihu had the right, it, I believe that Elihu was like um. In New Testament, I think he was like Peter. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, what you just said, I'm building my church. And then Jesus, a little later in that chapter, Jesus said, I got to go through some stuff. Then Peter said, not no, Lord, no, it ain't going to happen. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Now he talking to the same guy. Same man. One moment, Peter telling the truth. The next moment, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So Elihu is now, look like, on a stable, uh, he's, he's stabilizing. And I think that when we stabilize the word of God and when we get it and we do it correctly, then we're going to usher in. God is coming in and saying, give me the mic. Because God coming in chapter 38. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, by watering, he said, by my breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the water is straightened. In other words, I can just draw the water. I can just dry the water by just saying, and water just, just get thin, stop flowing. He said, I can send a frost. This is what Elihu said. Or he can just breathe on water and say, don't flow today. And it turned around when once he does that, and it is turned round about by his word, his counsel, just by God saying, Job, pay attention to the, the wisdom of God in me. I'm talking. I think I got your attention, Job. Why? That they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the world in the earth. He said, God said, I got everything. I direct the, the he said, y'all down there doing all that, all of that. And all I got to do is tell the water to dry up. Frost get on that. Animals go in the den because I'm finna sit a deep freeze. And I'm just, I'm here being God and everything is at, at my disposal. But I still got my eyes on man. Man won't pay me no attention, but he pays attention to the weather, which is controlled by me. He causes it to come. Whether for correction, God has sent storms for corrections. You said he will. You want to, you know, when, when Jonah was on that ship and he wasn't supposed to be there. And God told that water to, to, to shake, the sh shake that ship. And he said, um, that was me. I had to get him off. Need somebody to correct it. And 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 the, and the, and the uh, pilot or the captain of that ship said, when when Jonah came to him, he said, "I think I know what's going on." Cause Jonah was down there asleep, and he came, "Get up!" And he said, "All oh, y'all pray to whatever God you you serve." He said, this, this, "This man was I don't care what kind of church you go to, the trouble that they start throwing cargo overboard, trying to you know save themselves." And then when Jonah realized he was asleep while they was stressing out. And the man caught him sleeping, told him to get up and get up and pray to whatever God you believe. Go back and check the word. He said, whatever God you believe. 
See, that's the kind of thing I would be saying today if I had the voice and say, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all like Elijah said. Whatever God you believe in, pray to that God. And whatever God that answered by fire, let him be God. And God won again on that day. So Jonah came back up to the captain, told the ship, the ship captain, I think I'm the reason why this thing done. That man said, you what? You, you what? He said, no, I ain't, ain't going to throw you overboard. He said, throw me overboard. He said, I, I'm the reason why this ship doing that. And that captain said, no, mm -mm. you, no, you ain't the reason. No. But then that, that wind whooped that ship again. That man said, he said, you, you think you causing all this? Throw him overboard. And they said when they threw Jonah overboard, that ship became just like a baby. They said, whoop, whoop, burp, I'm full. And Jonah was in his next um, transportation. So yes, God does bring correction by water. He told that water to wave. Yes, he did. But we, we got to be smart enough to know when things are out of order. And it's done by the atmosphere and the thing that's in the earth. We sit down and we calculate well, he, he started that. And he did that. God said, I'm, when y'all going to realize that I run things? Why y'all blaming each other? Why you blaming, why you blaming, you know, even the season that we're going through? Why are y'all blaming? He's asking me what's going on. Be smart enough like the Philistine. At least they, they ain't kidding on the Batman. But they asked me, could I be behind the plague, the corona? Could I be behind it? Could I have a solution? But no, I go and let y'all figure it out on paper and blame each other and then hit each other and do all that. He said, but ain't nobody consulted me. Nobody in this book except Elihu right now is getting into the presence of God to talk about God to see what in the world is going on with, with uh, um, Job. God said, I got the answer to everything. And those things that obey me are the things that you need. You just don't need it all the time. But I have to shake y'all up. He calls it, what verse am I on? He said, the weather, the elements, the tornadoes, the tsunamis, the river flow, the dry up or the overflow is all by me. He calls it to come, why? By correction or for his land, I would give it because the land, I need this land. I ain't get rid of my land because y'all don't want to act right. I heal that land before I let y'all destroy what I gave you to enjoy. He said, I'll send some rain to the land, so sure will. And then sometimes I send rain or stuff because I want to have mercy. Well, you know, Elihu don't know what he's talking about. No, because I can go to the scriptures and show you where... Every last one of these things God did to show that it is supported by scriptures that shows you I sent it for correction. I did it because the land need healing. Because I said that my people that are called by, called by my name would just read the word and get a good understanding. I'll give y'all the reason why everything out of order. I'll give you why police, I'll put right police in place. I'll put you how to behave yourself. I'll put... Uh, uh, the difference between employer and employee because now I can't tell the difference because the employee is talking back to an employer. I don't, I can set the house back and all God's ain't got no problem with that. I just need y'all to understand that when you come to me, come to me correct. That's why I can't move how I want to move because you don't talk about me like I'm God. And then sometimes I give it to you because mercy. When the children of Israel were coming from Egypt and going to the promised land, they started complaining about, we, we need a break, blah, 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 blah. And the Lord sent them over there until, like a, and started letting them folk eat fruit from trees. It, it, it was so good until, because they always had this diet where God was sending them manna. But he let them with them kind of uh, uh, pomegranates. And he went over there and sent that food and they had that cool breeze, but God was like, that's just for a moment, let go. <laughs> yeah, we got to get on to the promised land. I'm taking you where you can, you ain't going to have to worry about the manna because you're going to be able to have pancakes with some honey on it. He said, so yeah, I have mercy. And he said, listen unto this, O Job. He said, stand still. And he said, consider the wonder, wonderful or wondrous works of God. You got Job's attention now. You reminding Job that I forgot about him not being 
where I thought he ought to be when I started talking out of my mouth, being Job and still loving God. Because Elihu was saying, I heard you say some things, but I ain't finna call them out. But I just want you to pay attention to the wonderful things about God. He said, do you know when God disposed them and caused the light of his cloud to shine? He said, do you know that when God puts things in order and he tells the, the, the clouds to, 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 okay, next verse, and it'll explain. Do, do you know the balancing of the clouds? Have you thought about, when you're in your situation, Job, do you know the word said, think on these things? Whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are true of a good report. When you get even in your situation, Job, now he's encouraging Job. Have you ever thought about the goodness of God when you get way down to where you are? That if you could just think on the goodness of God, that that'll elevate you back to where you want to be. He said, Job, my heart, it ain't in, it ain't in the same place. There's a shifting going on. Do you know the balancing of the clouds, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge? Do you know that nobody can balance the clouds when they all the clouds get to the point that they get so cloudy and so dark looking that God said, bring balance back. He said, have you thought about the good things of God? Job in that condition while them worm crawling over you. He said, I ain't even paying attention to you no more. I'm, 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 full of, I'm full of the word right now. He said, have you noticed? He said, how the garments are warm. In other words, you got your swimsuit on and you got your nice sundress on. He said, because the warm air over there on one of them good old islands. He said, God, he has allowed that warm air to come in. He said, have you noticed that, Job? How we change garments when the weather, God permits the weather to do what he does, and then we feel good and having fun. Oh, God. He said, he said, how your garments are warm when he quiets the earth by the south wind, that God is able to give us a break. But it looked like we don't talk to God until he had to tell it to get dark outside. He said, teach us what we shall say unto him. No, I missed the verse. Have you with him, have you with him spread out the sky? Were you there when he said, Joe, get your problem, get your ass off of you. Did you notice that you can't do nothing? Go outside and look at the beauty of God and then forget what you're going through and say, Lord, how great thou art. Take another look at, instead of wherever you are right now, whatever's going on in your life that seems like it ain't up, go, go look at the nature of God and consider those things. And watch whatever you go through when your eyes get focused on him, that somewhere in the translation of the navigation of God's watching him, he start fixing them things that's going on with you. Ooh, even if he finna come down and bring correction to what you were doing. He said, let me show you what you're doing wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Get our, I think we get our eyes back on what God has done that we cannot do, then whatever we are doing, we're going to start getting some answers. I believe that. I think this thing is made plain. Ain't that right, Parker? She ain't here, but I know if she was here. Grandma, I like that. He said, have you, were you with him when he spread out the sky, which is strong, and, as a, and he can make it so hot, he can make it feel like a molten looking glass. God can take the same thing and he can put a fire on something and make that thing look like it's brass on fire. He can take a mountain and he can make it say, don't touch it. Don't touch it. And then he said, teach us what we shall say unto him. Job, teach us what we shall say unto him. For we cannot order our speech by reason of doctrine. Job, let's talk about something that, let's talk about something that both of us know that we can't do. Let's just consider God. Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of doctrine. We can't tell God what to do. Our, our brains are, are too dull to tell God how to run his heaven. Shall it behold him that I speak? Shall I get God attention with my frail, my limited, finite understanding? If a man surely speaks, surely he shall be swallowed up. There ain't nowhere in the world I can touch God. 
I just have to understand that he is God. This guy has really changed because I'm changing as I talk about this guy. <laughs> and now men see, and now men see not the bright light, which is in the cloud, but the wind pass and cleanse them. And now men see, men see, and this King James got me. And now men see not the bright light. He don't see the lightning, which is in the cloud. He don't see that. Because what? The wind came past and he cleaned the cloud. He told the cloud to dry up. And now we see a sunny flowing cotton candy looking. The lightning is not there. Everything is calmed down. And there ain't nobody organizing or orchestrating that but God. He said, fair weather comes out of the north. He said, if you think it is looking good coming from the north, with God, it's terrible majesty. In other words, we the majesty of God, when it says terrible, it's not talking about something chaotic. It's saying that it is so beautifully put together, God is, that we would fall on our faces and it would be as if terror hit us because of behold how, if we think that a sunny day looks good and the beauty of God looks good on the island with the coconut and all of the, the blue water, what about if we see God as he is? He said, now, if you think that'll make us fall. He said, touching the almighty, we can't find him. We can't find him out. This guy is going to get Job out of the position of thinking about himself and said, look at the glory of God. Touching the almighty, we cannot find him out. He said he is excellent in his strength, his power. What he does is excellent. He's excellent in his judgment. If he was to call a spade a spade, it's a spade. And he is justice. That means that he ain't going to try nobody and you ain't going to spend no more time for the crime other than what he says exactly. He's going to treat you according to what he said, and he's going to be fair about it. I mean, it's going to be no, you ain't going to ever have to call God and say, I need to see you in my office because you didn't judge me right. He said, no. And his judgment and plenty of justice, he will not afflict. He will not afflict. In other words, I've been thinking about you, Job. And I said, the reason why I see you in a condition was I thought you had done some. He said, but God don't put nothing on you that cannot be justified or his thoughts or he considered. He would not do that. And even he would never, and even if you say, well, if he does have to bring punishment, it's not because you ain't need it. He's, he's, he said, I can't do that. I would never, I, yes, I will grab you and put you back in line. Don't get me wrong. And you, uh, um, what's that word said? My afflictions, um, uh, uh, what that David said, it is good that I have been afflicted. Because David was saying, because if you hadn't stopped me from what I was doing, then I'd have messed this whole plan of salvation out. When I did to a man after taking his wife and I went through all that stuff and my kids and all the stuff that David, all the crazy stuff that David went because he made a decision. With God's justice, David said it was good that he stopped me. But he would never send anything on us without it happened to be just. He just don't go around mad. I got a bad day today. I don't feel like I don't like him today. If God ever, if we ever anger God, it's because he already said before I told you, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. Don't. And then you go there and he said, now I got to keep my word. But I don't set you up to make you fall. I'm not the God that people just said, every time you do something, I just want to blot you out. I just want to knock you out. He said, I'm not that kind of father. Even though I know that's what y'all, that's what Elohim them said I am. That's why you put Job in a, in a position where you can't see him like that because you think that every time a believer goes down and something wrong is something that they did that you feel like they're ready to go to hell and he's and I'm ready to heal it. 
I'm ready to get him up. But you got people so afraid of me until when I do have to bring destructions or put you in a position, you feel like I did something wrong when I told you don't go, don't go there, don't don't walk down that street, don't go in that deep water, don't do that, and then you get it, then you blame it on me. He said, I get that kind of blame, I get that kind of preaching all the time. God will make you sick so he can bring you out. No, you did something. And God on that number line, he said, now I'm telling y'all, now positive goes up this way. Negative goes back that way. And the more you go negative, the higher your number. Don't get it confused. Negative number says it's better to be a negative one than be a negative 100. That means you 100 steps away from me. Get back to me. Get close to me. Come back to me. And when you come to me and start over and a new beginning and keep going right, you're going to start getting on that good side. I'm trying to get you from the negative to the positive. I only, I only got the negative there because I'm letting you know that if you don't obey me, you're going to see negativity. But if you follow me, then I'm going to always be with you. And even when you, and you will make a mistake, and you will sin, but I'm going to be there to redirect you. I ain't going to sin. Oh, yeah, you are. The word said, Jesus said, Why are you going? how are you going to say you don't? Well, I don't be, I, when I look at the word, I can even send, I can sit here and with the right intent, teach the word and, and, and say something wrong with the wrong, with the right intent, but it'd be wrong. Just like Elihu and God is saying that, go back and tell him you wrong on that. what I do? What wrong means sin? And it ain't even got to be that. It could be just the fact that you got on my nerve and I said too many things that I shouldn't have said and I did wrong and I caught myself and said I'm wrong. Anyway, you say you ain't saying that. I'm talking to the people that tell the truth. Anyway, so God would never... Oh, look at my thing. You're trying to let me... What did you jump on me? And he said, that I ain't going to afflict you. If any affliction comes, it's because I ain't going to lie to you. I will beat you with many stripes. Because you know better. I didn't have to take Moses out of here... Because I ain't like Moses. Now Moses got beside himself. And I told him, boy, come on. You ain't finna, I ain't finna let you go to that promise. And Mo, Moses talked to God so long. Lord, please let me go. He said, don't talk to me about that no more. Don't talk to me no more about that. I sent you down there with a simple uh, assignment. And, and told you good with the telling people. That ain't the first time you messed up Moses. But I'm just going to get you on this one. As close as you are to me. You think I'm going to let you have that, all them strikes? You been with me and you been laughing together. Go somewhere, look at it, and then come on. Let me get you out of this earth. I'm done. You ain't, want to talk. You ain't going to the promise. Moses wanted to go there so bad. Moses, God said, boy, you ain't going there. You can look at it. You don't get it. I still love you, but you're finna die. And the Lord hid him. And don't nobody know where Moses buried it today. But guess what I know Moses did? When Jesus got ready to go through that, tra uh, got ready to be encouraged, it was Moses and Elijah was there. Man, you can do this. No, G, you can do this. Right, go, come on now. Come on now. We're here to come on. Exercise. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying on the mountain of transfiguration. And they had to come down and tell G, you can be all right. Moses was there. All right. He said, so if I, I'm not the one that's doing the affliction. Affliction is there just in case you touch it. I'm just going to keep my words. So keep on going and messing with that. Keep on messing with that woman and that's not your wife. But keep on. Let them folk tell you that, I, that I'm so good that I don't never. He's talking, tell you something now. I got both hands, good and evil. Choose you this day. I suggest you choose good. Because if you don't, I got this side too. Anyway, last verse. Men do therefore fear him, said Elihu. He respects not in it that are wise of heart. So here at the close of this day, he said, People that when they get to know God, they will fear him. They boy to start preaching. Now, last night when I read this chapter, I was hung. I was like, Lord, what are you saying? What you saying? What you saying? What you saying? And I took out this thing and I said, well, you know what? Even last night, this is what I said last night. I don't know what you say. But will I trust you? Now I understand the whole meaning. Last night, even what I just read to you didn't flow out of me like that. But I was willing to say, even if I don't understand all that 
Elohu said. And I can't say that I got it 100% right again. But I do know this. Whether I got it right or whether I need to be corrected. I'm hooked. I trust him. If I got to be like Job to the point that I don't know what you're saying. I don't know how you use Elohu. I don't know. But when I realized, I said, Lord, if Parker had to read this, you can't complicate this thing. Because yesterday I was reading it and it was complicated. But today when I said, you got to break this thing down because you told Peter, he said, feed my sheep and my lamb. And you didn't give a different menu. You gave him the same menu. So what are you saying? He said, just say what I said. Read it. See it. Say it. And if you need correction, I'll take that staff and pull you back in and say, come here, let me talk to you until you go back and teach that over. Or just don't put that online because it, it don't represent me. Men do therefore fear him. He respects not any that are wise of heart. So he just told the truth. Whether Job, he wasn't throwing no, he wasn't throwing no, uh, I'm going to get you, Job, to my last word. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Job 37. I trust him. And today, I'm getting ready to unfold. Job 38. Hey, Tim and Randy. <laughs> I know y'all too. Anyway, Tim, all I can say is, I went back and wherever both we saw in our class last night, that God ain't, it's something happened to that boy named Elihu. And God said, if, if I can get y'all to focus on me, I can save somebody. Where is me, says the Lord, the word. He says, because just as sure if you take your eyes on me and you keep on talking about Job, this story going to get longer and longer. <laughs> he said, because I ain't moving until y'all start recognizing I'm God. And this boy said, my heart has moved and it's in a different place. And he started talking about God. And that's the last thing. And guess who getting ready to usher in and take the mic? God. Gotta go. Gotta do what I do. Love y'all. Bye.